Hello everybody, I'm Katrina Morton, I'm a Sensual Motor Psychotherapist and today what I'd like to talk to you about is our thoughts. How much can we trust our thoughts and how our thoughts don't define us. Before I jump into that, if you enjoy these videos, give us a like and subscribe to our channel because it really helps us get our message out to more of you. When I'm talking about our thoughts, I'm not talking about the things that we think about things, you know, how we work things out. It's about the thoughts we have about ourselves, the things that we believe about ourselves, our belief systems, and how all our thoughts are intertwined in all of those things. And often, the things that we think about ourselves, that we believe about ourselves, they've been formed over the years about what people have told us about ourselves, their opinions of us, and how they react to the way that we are, particularly emotionally. Because when we're little, we don't really have opinions and things. We're curious, but you know, children are much more expressive. They're much more driven by their emotions. And it's how our carers and the people around us and teachers and friends have reacted to us and told us things about ourselves. I mean, there's a really common one that everybody's kind of aware of, that if you tell somebody often enough that they're stupid, then they really believe that they're stupid. And those things have a really massive impact on us. And it really, really impacts on what we believe about ourselves, the things that we tell ourselves, how we react when we do certain things. And that internal narrative can be quite difficult to kind of catch because we're so familiar with it, it just does it all the time, that we often don't give ourselves the opportunity to kind of question. It's like, you know, when we do something and we like berate ourselves, what words do we use? If we just stop for a moment and say, what did I just say to myself about myself? Maybe even sometimes write these things down so that we can actually see them written down. It's like, oh my goodness. And it can give us a much better idea of, who does that sound like? Does that sound like somebody in particular? Do we remember being told that phrase, that message, time and time again when we're little? If our reactions to things and our emotions and the way that we feel about things have been dismissed by carers, oh, don't be so silly, that's nonsense. Or if we've been really criticised for that, then we believe those things about ourselves and we learn how to deal with those emotions. When we've had that kind of experience, either through parenting or, like I say, from school, that can come up a lot in schools, then we do the same to our internal self. And we don't even know we're doing it, but we parent ourselves and our internal systems the way that we've been parented because it's the only way we know it's the only blueprint we've got and it happens automatically and it can be quite unconscious we can really not notice that and an awful lot of those things we keep to ourselves if there are very negative critical things then we'll often try and kind of cover them up we don't want other people to see those things and so we can kind of mask and put on a bit of a performance for the outside world. You know, how are you doing? Oh yeah, I'm great, I'm great. When we ask people that question, we expect them to just say, yes, I'm fine. People don't often go into the, oh well, this is how I really am. Because we don't believe that that's a done thing. It's not an expected thing. So we keep all these things really quiet and within ourselves. We can have these really negative viewpoints. And when we develop belief systems, then we have to keep making them come true. We have to keep making those things solid, their beliefs. And again, it's unconscious. We won't really know we're doing it, but it, they play themselves out. How many times do we go out? We can have a really good conversation with people. We can be having a laugh, whether it's just over a cup of coffee or just a social interaction. And then we come back and then our head, our thoughts start to kind of chug away and go, oh, was I too loud? 
oh, I wonder, did I say the wrong thing? Was that the right thing to say? The more intelligent people are, and the more kind of creative their brain is, the more they can catastrophize. And some people can turn what was a really good, absolutely pleasant evening, afternoon with people, interactions with people, into some kind of awful catastrophizing thing. And we'll make up that narrative. If we have a belief system that says, people don't really like us, they don't really want us around, they find us X, Y, or Z, then we'll find a way of completely turning around what actually happened into a whole different narrative that suits our internal voice and our internal beliefs about ourselves. It can be a really good exercise, particularly if you kind of either forget something or walk in a room and can't remember what you're doing there or drop something. What is the narrative that goes through your head? What do you tell yourself about yourself? When we can start to really become aware of that and to really notice it, then it gives us an opportunity to put something else in place, to have a different set of reactions and responses to what just happened. Something a bit softer and kinder, because it can really stop us doing what we want to do. If we have very limiting beliefs about ourselves, then no matter how much we think, oh, I'd love to be able to do that, the internal narrative will come in and tell you why you shouldn't do that. And often it kind of goes unnoticed and so we can't work out why it is that we always feel kind of stuck in things. We always feel like it's okay for other people to do those things, but it's not okay for us to do that. And that can have a really big impact on our life, the things that we do, how confident we feel and giving ourselves permission to be able to do those things. If we can begin to kind of work out that internal narrative, know where it's coming from, not absolutely believe every single thing that comes into our head, be more conscious of it. Am I really whatever I believe about myself? Or was that something that's been told to me and I've internalized it and I believe it? And our thoughts only go round in our head. And the ability to change something into something else, more negative, is a thought process. When we can start working with the body and really get a sense of how we know, how our body tells us that actually we're relaxed, we're having a good time, this person is interacting with us in a good way, or there's another underlying narrative. We're getting a different kind of intention through from the words that somebody is speaking. Our body will pick that up. Our body will be able to tell us how it's responding. When we can use our body and include our body, then we get a much more accurate sense of what's going on. How many times do we think about doing something and have a response to it that's a much more kind of primal response and then we change our mind. We let our head start picking things apart and interfering. You know, if we're doing any kind of quiz, often the first thing that comes into your head because we're reacting to it is the right thing. And then our head will go, oh, hang on a minute. No, maybe it wasn't that. Maybe it wasn't then. It was that. And we'll often give the wrong answer. Sometimes heads can be brilliant at working things out. And, you know, those kind of thought processes are brilliant. But when it's about what we believe about ourselves and what we're capable of, then if that's limiting, then, you know, we really owe it to ourselves to be able to be the best version of ourselves, to not have the belief systems that other people have given us that are negative. We should be able to really be able to sense into things. No, I really do like that. That really does make me feel comfortable. Oh, I can tell when I'm having a good reaction to something. And use that as your blueprint because you've got that present moment experience, you're observing how your body is reacting and responding and not just coming out of a situation and then think, think, think and turning something that was really good into something really negative, changing the whole outlook on things. We're not taught, we're never ever taught 
how to really notice, listen, how to give our body some value. We're only really taught the value of our thinking brains, which, as I say, they're really good. But when it comes to social interactions, relationships, it's much more about what we feel. And we only know how we feel by knowing how it feels in our body, what our body is telling us. When we can learn to notice, to engage, to have a sense of ourselves, wake up the connection. Wake it up so that you can begin to feel what's happening with things. You know, and we can practice it out with things. We can think about something that we know that we like. How does your body respond and tell you that? Think about something that is unpleasant that you don't like. How does your body tell you that? How does it join in and really affirm and validate that whole experience? If you think of your favourite place, whether it's a beach or think of a really nice, pleasant experience that you've had or that you can visualise, and you really get that as clear as you can, how does your body match? How does it tell you that that's a good thing? Do you get a kind of warm feeling through your chest? Does your breath deepen? Does it give you that kind of softening sense of, oh, that's really good? Or does it give you a kind of whoosh of really good energy? How is your body telling you that? Just practice it and it will tell you. Visualize something that you don't like, maybe a spider or insects or a wasp. Visualize that and notice how your body might contract. Does your core start to contract? Does your stomach contract? Do you pull away from it when you visualize this thing? Do you open up to it? Do you kind of move towards it? Go back to this one. It's like, how do you notice? How is your body telling you? Practicing these things because it's a really honest, true reflection on your reaction and your response to that and your relationship to it. You know, and we can do the same with people. Think about somebody that you really like Think of all the things that you like about them and notice how that feels in your body. Think about somebody that's been mean to you or that you know that you don't get on with. How does your body feel when you remember your interaction with that person? How is it telling you that? Arms, legs, shoulders, back, stomach, core, breath. How is it telling you? It will change. Learning to notice will give you that massive, massive heads up. Give it equal importance to what your head thinks. When you catch yourself saying really negative things about yourself, notice it, that's the thing I always do, and then put something else after it. Something that's a bit more realistic. You know, everybody drops things sometimes. It doesn't mean I'm an idiot. You know, oh, I'm juggling too many things, I'm trying to do things too quickly. I'm allowed to make mistakes. Put something that you can actually take on board. If it's something that's too, you know, far away from what your negative thoughts were, then you might not be able to kind of take that in and, and believe it and be comfortable with it. Have something that you're more comfortable with. And just practice. Like I say, writing them down can be very revealing about the kind of general tone, the general theme of what's going on and where those things have come from. Who's told you that? You believe that about yourself. The more you know, the more you can change, the better you can get to know yourself, the more confident you can feel, it becomes easier to have boundaries and have a bit more open energy. So I hope that you can relate to that, it resonates, it helps you make sense of things, gives you some ideas of different ways of doing things moving forward. So if you've enjoyed this video, give us a like, subscribe to our channel and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye!